don't bother even looking at the analytics till you've done your first hundred videos. So I thought, well, let me just do those in the first hundred days. Um, and then I'll start thinking about stuff. Um, once I got to a hundred days, I thought, well, I'll go for 365 videos in a year. And then stuff came up, life happened. And so by the 15th of May, I think I'd done around 300 videos. So I didn't quite get the 365, but it's all kind of that process of, you know, honing the, uh, the skills and sharpening the saw as it were to mix metaphors there, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Mastermind Thinks podcast. Today, I got a special, special guest. Uh, I've met, I met this guy over the internet, and so that's kind of where we. Uh, I feel like it's where I meet all my friends nowadays. <laughs> so, so no <laughs> surprise to you guys there. But let me introduce you guys to Alec Johnson. Alec, how you doing today, man? I'm very well, thanks, Chris. Thanks for thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Thanks for joining. Uh, so real quick, like I always try to do in the beginning, can you just take a quick second and just give us a brief introduction, let the people know who you are, kind of what you got going on now, man? Yeah, sure. So I've got a uh, YouTube channel, Take One Tech, and uh, that's kind of the brand that I use for all of my sort of content creation stuff. The uh, The thing that's perhaps a little bit different about the channel is that all of the videos I make on there are made in one take. So uh, it was really as a way to practice the process of making videos in one take with no edits because uh, I had to create a course content for some of my other business interests that I was involved in and I just found that the editing process was a bit of a drag for me so <laughs> I thought if I can get it all done in one take uh, that would be much better so the channel started really as a way to practice that process and it's just kind of grown from there really. Man, it's so good because I, I saw you note that in there, and I like I didn't I didn't even put the the two together when I was uh like looking at the channel, looking at the name, and that, and I was like, and so it's cool that um, you jumped in there and you kind of made that. Like, how's that process been for you? Like, how long? How, I guess how long ago one did you start in the content creation side of it? And like, how long did it kind of take you to, for lack of better terms, perfect? And you know, I know there's no perfect perfect thing, right? But f get more comfortable in what you do um, on the one take. Uh, well, actually, so the, the thing about perfection is I've got a bit of a, uh, my, the one bit of merch that I do have is recovering perfectionist. And that yeah. is because the whole thing about it was to get over my perfectionism because I have been a perfectionist all my life. I've wanted everything to be perfect. The things that I've done in my professional life, I feel have all demanded perfection. Uh, so over, I, I live in Thailand. We ran a construction company here for oh, 10 nice. years. And uh, so, you know, if you're building a home for someone, it's got to be perfect, hasn't it? Um, you know, all the roles that I've done in life have, have demanded perfection. And so this was a case of me getting over that perfection to stop where, where, where perfection becomes a sort of mental block to actually getting content out. Um, and the, the key to it for me was really finding Ecamm Live, uh, which enables me to just record everything in one take, all the different scenes, things like that. All of my, the things that I do on my channel are kind of tech tutorials, really, uh, some product stuff as well. Um, but you can easily set up all the camera angles and things like that in uh, in ecamm and then just uh, just go for it <laughs> so uh, i'm i'm far from perfect yet it's just a constant you know evolution really and trying to just get better bit by bit really i suppose yeah you know, that's that's so good because uh one of the things the reason i love that personally is because one of the things i had a hard time with is kind of when i got into content creation um i was i was trying to get started on youtube but the problem for me was I, I could not record a video. Like it took me forever to record a video. And then when I realized like, oh, I can just go live. Who cares? Let's just see <laughs> yeah. what happens, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. so, so that's so good, man. Um, So, all right, real quick, because you said you're in Thailand. So small fact, my mom is actually from Thailand. Oh, wow, cool. <laughs> so just random, <laughs> random, random thing has nothing to do with the live. <laughs> But so how long ago did you actually get started on the, say, the YouTube channel specifically? It was in uh, May last year. So uh, oh, just, wow. over, just over 12 months. Yeah. Oh. But I set myself the goal of doing 100 videos in my first 100 days on YouTube uh, because uh, it was actually Doc Rock. So he's kind of one of my uh, uh, mentors. And yeah. he said, don't bother even looking at the analytics till you've done your first 100 videos. So I thought, well, let me just do those in the first 100 days. Um, and then I'll start thinking about stuff. Um, once I got to a hundred days, I thought, well, I'll go for 365 videos in a year and then stuff came up, life happened. And so by the 15th of May, I think I'd done around 300 videos. So I didn't quite get the 365, but it's all kind of that process of, you know, honing the, uh, the skills and sharpening the saw as it were to mix metaphors there, but <laughs> yeah. 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 So, that, so that's so good. Cause, and so, and what interests me a lot about that is because for, especially for tech videos, right? generally especially tutorials in tech like the 
generally speaking, it's like highly produced. They're taking, you know, 200 takes to try to throw in. Mm-hmm. The, like, how, how did you find that process? I mean, yeah, because I heard you say you use Ecamm, which obviously is a, is a great tool. How do you keep up that, that, that production value in that to keep up with other kind of tech um, you, uh, YouTubers? Um, so I guess I don't have so much B-roll and things like that, you know, when I'm covering products, although that is something that uh, I, I said I'd do a year and then I'd kind of reevaluate everything. And one of the things that I'm looking to do is basically doing all of the, uh, you know, B-roll for products and things like that, and then just adding those in in scenes in Ecamm. So I can still make something that basically comes across as a an edited video. A lot of people, when they watch my videos, they don't realize that it's done in one take and don't make the connection either. Um, and some people say, <laughs> I've had a lot of comments saying, this is a really good uh, video. You know, you can't see the edits. It's like, there isn't any edits. <laughs> um, so that's, that's, that's kind of why. But um, uh, yeah, I, I found that when I was doing stuff that I was going to be editing, I was my own worst enemy, really, because I would strive for that perfection. And I would think, right, I've got to, I've got to get this right. And if, I, you know, if it's not quite right, then go back and do it again. And then when it comes to the editing process, I'm then trying to stitch together all these things that don't quite match up. Whereas with the, the sort of stuff that I'm talking about, mainly it's, it's kind of software on the, on the computer. Um, then I always just approach it. Like I'm just sitting down with a friend, a colleague, you know, a family member, whatever. Cause I, I am pretty much, you know, everyone's go to tech support in my circle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a case of just sort of sitting down and taking that approach of, I'm just telling a friend how to do something. Uh, and I never, you know, struggle to do that if it's a, you know, in a one-to-one situation, but somehow when people get in front of a camera, they, their mind that makes some, uh, uh, association that <laughs> oh, I'm on camera now. So I've always just thought, well, I'll just, I'll just do it as if I'm just talking to a friend and that's, that's kind of the way that I've done it. And it's not perfect as I say, but it's, uh, it gets, gets the message across. <laughs> yeah. That's so good, man. Uh, so one of the things, and, and again, like I'm saying, obviously we met on the internet, but like one of the, one of the communities that we met in is kind of the Amazon live thing. Right. And so yeah. like you doing the one take, obviously that I feel like that makes live video for you pr- simple or easy i don't know which word we want to use for that mm-hmm. how, how was that experience when you ju- kind of jumped into there because i think you did your first, at the time of this recording it wasn't that long ago right that you did your first kind of live stream on there yeah i've done uh, i've done a couple now um mm-hmm. and then uh, started doing my uh, my shoppable videos as well which obviously were just all one take as well but um uh yeah i mean i do a weekly live stream on my youtube channel anyway so i was kind of used to that and the interaction side of it that's something that's additional to that you you don't get with just recording live to tape but uh yeah it's been really interesting i'm i I love the the platform and i'm looking to do you know more and more on there as well different different types of live streams on uh, on amazon as well but i like the uh i like the engagement i like the discoverability that there is on there you know you're getting people as you're talking about products and things like that there's people just sort of popping in and out and it's I, I mean one of the reasons that i do the channel as well is just to help people that's you know anyone who makes tutorials is that they're there to, to help people so i like the idea of helping people making their decisions when they're you know buying on amazon basically so yeah it's a, it's a really really interesting platform that i'm just a, really a newbie at <laughs> Got it. Has, how long so how long have you been in the like amazon influencer or amazon associate program <laughs> So it was about, I think, um, just about a month ago, something like that, that I got accepted into it. I did yeah. my first live stream immediately, just went and did the full 90 minutes. You have to do 90 minutes of live streaming, as, as you know. <laughs> but yeah. um, I just thought, well, I'll just get that all done in one go. To be honest, that particular live stream, um, I, I, because I was just going to be talking about products, I just did a thing where I talked about every product in my studio. And with hindsight, nice. I filled up the carousel with like 40 <laughs> products. Yeah. And then I felt like I shouldn't have really done this on my first live stream because then I felt like I was really conscious of having to mention all of these different products. And I felt like a bit too much like a salesman as opposed to an enthusiast. <laughs> so yeah. my second live stream was all about the Rodecaster Pro and I went through the whole setup of it and everything like that. Yes. And it was more sort of focused. So going forward, I'll do things like that, where it's more kind of focused on specific things as opposed to having to rattle through a list of products. <laughs> Got it. So, and so, and so you said, uh, so you say it's only really been about a month for you, but like, so, so far your experience with it, I, you like your experience with the live portion, how's your experience mm-hmm. been just uh, from what you've done so far, or even say just the community conversations about what Amazon will be as part of your, you know, your creator business. Mm-hmm. So I, with my YouTube channel, because it is more kind of tech um, tutorials, what I didn't want to do is end up mixing it with a, you know, is it hot? Is it a gear channel? Is it a 
a tutorial channel. So I want to keep those things sort of distinct. So I am obviously passionate about tech and the gadgets. <laughs> so uh, I'll be covering more of that sort of stuff on Amazon. Uh, but then I've also wanted to do an interview show for quite a while. So I'll be doing an interview show, which is about how people are using the tools that, um, that we use as live streamers and also in business, because on my YouTube channel, I do cover things that are more to do with productivity and automation tools and things like that. So I offer consultation calls. And so these are half and half. Some of it is the people who want to help with the, um, uh, the video production and, you know, making YouTube content and using Ecamm Live and stuff like that. But the other half are people who are using these tools in business, not for live streaming. Mm. And in fact, my whole sort of live streaming setup is probably 10% the like content creation, if you like, on uh, YouTube. The other 90% is using it for business in Zoom calls and things like that um, to you know run businesses from my, my studio, basically. So it's interviewing people who are doing that kind of uh, that kind of thing, uh, and that will be something that I'll do to um, LinkedIn, but then also to uh, Amazon Live as well, talking about the products that they use to actually the tools that they use to get their stuff done. Nice, that's so cool, man. And so and so with that, let me let's circle back real quick because one of the things um, we kind of jumped into in the in the beginning when you were talking about kind of your the other business that you do, right? And that was kind of what mm -hmm. sparked you to get into this space. Can you can you break down a little bit of uh, of that of like what you were trying to do and how that even like opened up this door to you? Yeah, so I'm I'm involved in a, a few different businesses, but one of the uh, ones that was the driver for me getting into this was I'm a partner in a social media marketing and advertising company. Uh, uh, that isn't my my background, but I'm I'm like the systems and processes guy. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and we create we created a course for people who um, for businesses who couldn't or didn't want to pay for an agency like us to come and do the things for them, Got it. but to teach them how to do it for themselves. Um, and so it was creating that course content. I created a full sort of system around it to make it easy for people to sort of follow along and, uh, you know, use Facebook advertising and all these kind of things and give them a framework work to uh, work within. Um, but then recording the uh, the content for that was where I, <laughs> I fell down because of all the editing and things like that. And so it was that then that I was looking to to uh, get into, you know, having a more uh, a more seamless workflow with this sort of one take thing. Uh, and that's when the YouTube channel started um, but I'm also a partner in a company we're launching an online uh, algorithmic trading trading platform oh, so uh, my background's actually engineering and mathematics and so we've created this algorithm that uh, basically helps people with their their, their trading uh, and so there again there's lots of uh, training materials that I'm going to be creating around the platform uh, and then with all of those things there's lots of collaboration and zoom calls going on that <laughs> that uh, all of this stuff comes into play because if if you can take the content creation skills and the live streaming and YouTube skills to a business meeting, you just blow people's minds. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, they're not used to seeing it in zoom. So it's just takes things to a, a whole nother level. So everything just sort of gels together quite nicely, really. Man, that's so, that's so good. Cause like when I have this conversation and I, like I use the term content creator or creator all the time and I get lost. Cause sometimes I'm in the room with, you know, small business owners, entrepreneurs yeah. and they, and to them, they're like, well, I'm not a creator, so what you're saying doesn't doesn't matter to me. And I'm like, no, no, but you but you are, or you need to be at least if you're not creating yeah. content, right? Like, what? Why is that important? Can you touch on that? Because, like I said, you you already just talked about how you kind of have these other businesses, but the creator, the creator, I guess, underling or structure kind of helps you with that. Can you like touch on why that that would be important for some people? Yeah, I mean, with. Obviously, with what happened over the past few years, <laughs> everybody's been in uh, inside a lot more than they used to be and working from home and on Zoom and things like that. And it's been a like real leveler in business, to be honest, because you don't have the, uh, you know, the, the big fancy offices, which have always been a statement that companies make about their, you know, their stature and their status and things like that. Um, you don't have that anymore. There's no people coming around to, to meetings in the, uh, you know, the swanky offices and uh, people spending, you know, thousands of dollars on their uh, business suits and things like that. Um, this is the business suit, this little box that we're in these <laughs> right. days. Uh, and it's how you look on there. And it's amazing that if, if you look and sound good in meeting platforms like Zoom, Teams and things like that, um, you've almost immediately got the, the respect and attention of everybody else in the room, you know, in the meeting. And people do attribute more sort of uh, more value to the things that you say, if you're saying them, you know, obviously you've got to say sensible things as well, but <laughs> if you're saying it with good quality audio and video, um, you've, you've already sort of leveled yourself up from, from everyone else. 
And it's amazing that you get people, you know, CEOs that are, um, you know, wouldn't think twice about spending however much on their uh, business attire <laughs> normally. Right, right. Uh, and yet in Zoom, they're just, you know, they've got the classic up the nose <laughs> shots, you know, and bad audio <laughs> and all this sort of stuff. And it's it, you, you, it relatively the amount that you spend on, you know, leveling up your appearance in, in those sort of platforms is minimal compared to what people used to spend on, you know. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> the things that go into meetings so yeah it's it's very important for me i think <laughs> man that's so good and so <clears throat> and so um i think one of the cool things too that you touched on um from your from your experience and what you have going on is that like you have the content creating as a business and then you kind of you said you had the social media marketing um mm -hmm. and then um oh refresh me with the third business i just the uh, algorithmic uh, trading platform that we're building so how does uh how does the content creation fit into the business like the question was i guess is uh, on that piece of the content creation is that a is that a is there a monetization strategy behind that or one that you're looking for or is that kind of like a side project and if it makes money it makes money it started out as as i say this way to practice this this process um but I've quickly realized that there's a lot of potential in it in itself. So I am devoting more time. It always used to be for the first year, I was only ever working on my content creation from 4 a.m. to 6, uh, 6 a.m. Oh, so wow. those two hours in the morning uh, when the kids are asleep, <laughs> I've got nice <laughs> peace and quiet. Um, like now it's half past four in the morning here, but this is my ideal time for getting stuff done before the world wakes up over here. <laughs> um, so it was always kind of like pushed to the side almost or you know i was fitting it in at that that time whereas now i've actually sort of carved out more time for it in the day and i've reclaimed these these two hours that are usually kind of my they've always were my self-development time you know journaling learning something new so i've kind of reclaimed that and now given more time over to it in the day but certainly monetizing it through um i mean there's the youtube partner program but you know we know that that's <laughs> that's not going to pay too many bills <laughs> right off the bat um, but then, you know, I create courses around uh, the things that I talk about in my channel. So like Ecamm Live, uh, Zoom and things like that as well. Uh, but then, you know, other avenues like the Amazon and things like that, just looking to add multiple streams of income around the the content creation stuff. So, yeah, def definitely a, a plan for you know building it into a, uh, a larger business. Yeah, that's so cool, man. And, and so like out of all that, because, of course, there's j just the content creation, right, there's. I mean, like unlimited amount of ways that you can kind of function that, put it together to make money. As you look forward, what what do you feel like your your favorite ones? Because I know I know I saw that you because you have a couple courses, right? Like, what mm -hmm. what's your favorite way so far um, in the content creation to like actually make money? Um, I do like the courses. I know that there's a lot of people who kind of just jump on courses. I think way way too early without much substance to them but one of the things about my um my youtube videos one of the problems that i've always seen with it is when i'm creating so many videos like for example ecamm live that has been probably the majority of my videos on my channel and it didn't set out that way i was always just intending to cover the uh the topics and the the uh the applications that i love and use most it just turns out that ecamm live and stream deck became two of my favorite things in the world uh, and so i tended to make lots of videos about them but one of the problems with that is on youtube is you're never really sure if the information is current or not so like my longest video that i made was a four and a half hour uh, tutorial on ecamm live start to finish just opening it up for the first time wow. to getting it all ready to do a, a live stream and it's been one of my most popular videos actually but the trouble is it was done sort of two versions ago i'm still getting people watching it the majority of it is still fine but there's just some things like the way that we used to make overlays with little cutouts and put them over the top of the, the cameras stuff like that you don't need to do that now in the later versions of ecamm so do i take the video down or do i leave it up uh, it's you know it's one of those things really um, and the same with lots of my other content, it might be slightly out of date. And so I'm getting people commenting on the videos with, you know, a question or how do you do this or how do you do that? And I'll say, well, you do it this way, but there's a later version now and I have to refer them to another video. So I thought, well, it's going to be much better if I just have an online resource that's basically everyone's encyclopedia for these things. So I've got my Ecamm Live Masterclass and my Zoom Masterclass and I'm continually updating them. So you always know that if you go to see that, then you'll always have the latest information if you want to learn something about scene overlays sound effects in ecamm or things like that 
then you'll always have the latest information in the course. And so that's the way I, I present it. I'm still doing all of the free content on YouTube, but if you just want a single place that you're always going to know is your sort of online resource, that's what the, uh, the course is for. And that's, that's the same with Zoom as well, because they're continually updating too. And yeah, then I've got a whole, a whole series of other courses that are due out about Stream Deck, Roadcaster Pro, and all these other things as well. No, but that's a, and, that, and that, I was just going to say how cool that was because I, I feel like that's even, like you said, one of the things that some people get caught up in the course thing, right? And they just kind of throw out a course and, it, it, you know, it's almost evergreen, but not really. Like, they're still like, yeah, well, yeah. what happens now? You know, Instagram course, right? Like, Instagram changes every week. Like, how do I yeah. how do I take the old one? So, I mean, what inspired you to even do that model of it? The the fact that you're going to, I mean, and like how long, ha one, uh, look, all the questions in my head at the same time. Mm -hmm. How long have you had the the e specifically the ecam and the Zoom course out? Uh, so the it started actually it was going to be a Zoom course. Okay. But because I think the ecam works so well with Zoom, right? And I'm recommending people use ecam with Zoom if they're they're on a Mac. Um, the ecam part of it just sort of ballooned very quickly, and and I thought, hang on, this is a course in itself, and there's lots of people who want this course that maybe don't use Zoom in, in any case. So the ecam course on its own is 130 lessons, yeah. so it's a it's wow. it's not like a little uh, you know <laughs> there's 130 videos in there, um, and then the uh, the Zoom course is around about the same size as well, and the ecam one was launched uh, what three three months ago, sort of um, April April time I suppose um and then uh, or end of march and then yeah the zoom course is only in the kind of the last month that i've then got around to actually getting that one out so uh yeah that's ecamlivemasterclass.com and zoommasterclass.com for those two so and it has so look i'm all I'm, I'm like i'm in this now man like in that <laughs> how, how's your how, how did you uh choose your pricing model are you is it just a one time and they're good is it a monthly like how, how did you have that yeah, it's one time uh, for that. So, and with the uh, so the ecam masterclass is one four seven, um, but then the Zoom masterclass is four nine seven. But actually, as with that, you also get the ecam one because so, so if you if you buy the Zoom course, you get the ecam masterclass included in that, as well as you know there's other bonuses like you know discounts on this, that, and the other. But um, the reason why uh, I do that is because I really just do believe that you need to use ecam with Zoom because yeah. the thing that it does is. When you're in a, in a meeting, you're trying to get a message across. Anything that's going to interrupt your flow is going to disrupt the message that you're trying to put across to people. Yeah. And so many times on Zoom, you see people say, oh, let me just share something with you. And then they're like <laughs> clicking, they're sharing the screen. <laughs> is it the right window? Right. They're doing all of this, all of this stuff. <laughs> and it's actually just a distraction. You want to be able to just be just as if you were sitting down at a table with somebody and saying, hey, look at this. This is the, you know, this is the details of the product or whatever it is you're trying to talk to someone about or sell them, uh, you know, or maybe, maybe you're just collaborating with somebody. You need to just pull up some information information so anything that we can do to make that just completely smooth and seamless and unfortunately zoom's built-in uh screen sharing and things like that whilst you know it's it's great it's powerful um it's it's certainly not seamless there's no uh, you can press a button on stream deck to uh, pull up the screen sharing options but there's no preset to say i always want to share this window or this screen to just be able to pop it up pop it back down again whereas with ecamm you can just actually do all of that so uh, it means that just with Ecamm and a Stream Deck, you can be uh, flying around, throwing things up on the screen, pulling them back down again, uh, writing on screen with your iPad and your Apple Pencil over the top you know, so that you to illustrate stuff. It just it just makes for a really seamless impression, you know, that you give to, to people when they're they're on the receiving end of that. Yeah, that's so cool. Are you, so are, on this in the video side, are you using um, are you virtual cam in right now through Ecamm? I am, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to ask because I got a, I got another I got another buddy that he uses eCam, but every time he tries to come into one of my streams because I'm using so I'm using VMix, um, every time he tries to come in, he literally his virtual cam will not work with VMix, and I was like, oh, they put a bug in it, man. They don't want you to. <laughs> they don't want you so to use what, what it is. There's a in the VMix login. There's a, th a button at the top that says "Click here for VMix Call Advanced," and then you can do screen sharing and uh, change the camera and the microphone and stuff like that. Yeah. And then also, I think it doesn't work on Safari, but on Chrome. Safari, for some reason, doesn't like you using virtual cameras, I don't think. Perfect. All right, I'm going to make him, I'm going to send this to him to make him watch this. Be like, hey, man, <laughs> Alec came in and it worked fine. He literally just yeah. was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so good. Um, 
Look, I got lost, man. We went down this whole EK rabbit hole, man, because that's just I, so there. I just love that community, and that's what makes it crazy, man. Mm-hmm. How, how did you How did you come across EK in the in the first place? Like, what made them your your go to in the beginning? So I started doing. Uh, I went down the OBS route. I pulled yeah. out all of my hair with it, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I just happened to watch. Uh, it was Matt Break Weekly, actually. So uh, with Leo Laporte, I've, I've been watching that for. Yeah. over a decade yeah. uh, and then i saw doc rock on there and he just mentioned it it wasn't yeah. he was doing a big promotion of it and he mentioned it i thought oh, let me check that out and then when i found it it was just like oh this is what i've been looking for it's you yeah. know if obs is cross-platform so it's basically the worst of both platforms <laughs> that's what happens <laughs> with cross-platform um whereas uh, yeah ecamm just um it's just it's just so mac like it just fit right in with my 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 way of thinking you know i, I just felt right at home in it so yeah, I feel like if you ever live stream like OBS is like your right of pass. You have to go and struggle through OBS <laughs> until you find something that, you know, like I'm, I'm yep. literally I'm only using VMix because so I live event production and just in the live mm-hmm. event production space, VMix out of nowhere just kind of became the thing. And so, yes, yeah. I got stuck on the PC side, but Ecamm definitely if you have a if you have a Mac Apple like Ecamm is the thing, man. Um, uh-huh. What man? What else are you? I mean, what else are you looking at in in the future in, in your in your business? Is is the course thing kind of? Hey, I'm just going to kind of create more courses in the creator side, or is it just kind of waiting to see how this Amazon thing plays out for you on the affiliate side? Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's all of them, all all of the things. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, looking to do more on LinkedIn as well. So I've I've had a LinkedIn profile, but I neglected it for probably about five years or something. I literally have not opened it up in that time. And then it's only recently that I've started to. Uh, give it a bit of love and attention uh, yeah. and so i'll be doing some live streams on there that are more sort of the business side of stuff um and then amazon's more kind of the uh, again i will have an, an interview show on amazon as well that's you know about people's gear and stuff but then also doing some of the deep dives on amazon too so about the products uh, you know deep dive tutorials on uh, loop deck stream deck and all that sort of stuff uh, and so on so um yeah it's just it's it's just basically being across all of the platforms and doing different things on each. I don't like to just, you know, go live and go live to three to four different platforms and, you know, split the audience over different places. I think it's, you know, just focusing on one show per platform is, is the way to go for me, I think. Nice. That's, man, it's such a good idea. And like, that's one of the things I even personally struggled with is because the show that I was doing on Amazon, I, it just, it didn't fit anywhere else. And so it was kind of yeah. like, all right. Like, I mean, you know, right here on this podcast, right? I, I really, I don't feel like I could do this podcast on Amazon. Like there's, you know, there's a couple guys trying it, but it's like, it just, I couldn't do it, man. So that's, that's so good. And, and so I, what, what I hear you saying in that is in, on the, in, you know, your social media background and that, right. Is the niching to those particular, the mm-hmm. audience on those platforms. Why did, why did yep. you feel that was important to, to make that distinction? Well, when I when I started uh, my YouTube channel, I heard about this thing called Restream and then thought, oh, that's cool. I can stream to multiple places. So I did start streaming to everywhere, <laughs> uh, even a couple of platforms that, to be fair, I'd never even heard of. But, you know, I was <laughs> yeah. going I was going to YouTube. I was going to Facebook. I was going to Twitch. Uh, when Twitter opened up, I started, you know, streaming to that as well. All like multi-streaming from the same place. But I quickly realized that, you know, the 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 power of doing a live stream is having a community that's all together in the same place chatting with one another rather than you know oh we've got a few guys over here some people over there and do you know what i mean it's 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 not the the, the best way to do it so it quite early on i realized that um yeah i want to just focus on one place uh, and then when i've been looking at these other platforms what i'm doing is definitely not necessarily a fit for those other platforms so um it's just a case of yeah choosing like you said choosing what's the right place for the right the right content really um, yeah. I did start to do stuff on uh, uh, so TikTok and YouTube Shorts and Reels and stuff like that. Not really got into a workflow with that either, um, but that's something that I want to sort of do more of as well as a way to, uh, you know, ultimately funnel people towards the uh, the other longer form content. But so and as so as you as you are looking at your content creation, as you're looking at um, you, you know your social media platforms, are you when people see you, are they seeing Alec Johnson in one place? And then, um, and then like one taking another or are they together? Like, how do you have that kind of show up? Yeah, it's pretty much, uh, take one tech everywhere, um, okay. or take one tech underscore on Twitter and Instagram. Cause someone got to that one before me. <laughs> um, but then, um, yeah, I mean, I do have a personal Facebook 
as well. So I, I do comment on stuff as just Alec Johnson, but um, um, there. And then also my LinkedIn is my, my name as well. I have created a, um, a Take One Tech page on LinkedIn, uh, but because I've got all the, you know, the, the existing connections under my, my name. So I, I go by my name on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, but uh, I mean, for the, the reason why I comment on stuff on in everywhere on Facebook as just Alec Johnson is that's my, my Facebook profile, but I didn't actually right. mention to any of my, my Facebook friends <laughs> for the first year that I was on YouTube that uh, I was even doing it. And the reason for that was it was also an experiment in what happens if you start your channel uh, from zero and then grow it organically without promoting it, you know, to um, obviously I was in different groups and talking about it, but not just like bringing over a load of followers or a mailing list from somewhere else. So uh, that was where I wanted to see, you know, how, how it can grow. So I'm about 2,300 or so uh, subscribers on YouTube and that's just been through sort of organic organic growth over that time nice that's so cool man and what is your and have you been playing into kind of the because of course everybody has their different youtube thing right but of course with mm -hmm. the type of content you're making it seems so more it seems more like seo friendly because you're saying how to do this is that kind of the strategy you're going with over there yeah 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 uh -huh. and then uh, you know as i say some of the growth will have come from um active in the ecom uh uh, Facebook group. I'm one of the moderators there. So, okay. you know, help. A, a lot of my content has come from directly from questions that people have asked. So someone will ask a question and then I'll just make a video about it to answer it. So, uh, you know, for sure there's been some sort of promotion there because I'll post a reply and people will find it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically like you say, the SEO sort of side of stuff. And so what made you pick, what made you pick um, putting so much time into YouTube, like YouTube being kind of the first bigger, big platform for you, for the brand? Uh, it's, it, it's it's been my uh, you know my longest uh, academic <laughs> institution that I've been a member of you know I've learned so much from uh, from YouTube the University of YouTube it's um, and so um, yeah it's just a case of you know wanting to practice this process that just for me just felt like the the logical place to do it you know it's not I wasn't intending to do short form content and so it just seemed the most the most logical place to do stuff that's like tutorial style content for me. That's so cool. Can I, so can I ask a little bit about the, the social media marketing agency? Is that cool? Yeah, sure, sure. So mm -hmm. uh, what what do you guys concentrate over there? Is it overall strategy or are there specific things that you try to do like ads or, you know, like what's your thought over there? Yeah, it's 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 like ads, really. Uh, so, you know, running ads for businesses. But I mean, obviously, the whole thing is a, a strategy. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we created a whole system around it that we used to implement with clients. But then we realized, well, we can just package this up to, to other people. So uh, we call it the clear system. So the C is for curating a cohesive cross platform online presence. The L is for the lead generation. So, uh, you know, putting time and effort into lead generation uh, through advertising, but also organically as well. Uh, the E is for engagement. So creating systems and processes to effectively engage on an ongoing uh, uh, manner with, you know, all of the leads that are coming in, but across all of the platforms as well. Uh, the A is for analysis. So analyzing all of the, uh, the data that you're getting in. I mean, we've, it's amazing the amount of detail that we can find out about all of these things, you know, seeing what's working, what's not, you know, doing split testing and things like that. And then the R is for refinement. So going back and refining all of these processes so that it is a process of continuous improvement. And that's kind of a really high level framework that we've used and adopted, you know, when we're explaining the process with clients. Um, but then it's equally, you know, it's a core structure as well, because we can go through all of those different things. Well, how do you, you know, automate certain aspects to create your cross-platform uh, presence online? You know, how do you create ads? How do you analyze ads? What are the metrics to look for and all that kind of st stuff? So, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the, the sort of backbone of that really. Oh, yeah. That's so, that's so cool. And like, so it's funny. So I spent a little bit of time in the, in the kind of social media marketing mainly because I personally love marketing. And so yeah. I started trying to, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I can do this for other people. And I got into it. And then I realized I really, my heart was really in the production side and the media side. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, as long as I understand it, let me do the, the front end stuff. And yep. the hardest part for me though, is hiring an agency. Um, one right. of the companies I work with, we, it's a production, live event production company. And we actually went and hired um, an agency that handles kind of um, the ads for some of the content stuff. And so the hardest part for me is having the conversation because I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so like in your strategy, do you guys try to stick to say one platform, say on the ad specifically, right? Do you stick to like one platform that you're like, hey, we do this and we do this well and we don't touch the other places or are you kind of like well versed in all the platforms? Yeah, it, 
it, it isn't just one thing. It, it depends on the, you know, certain things are suited to some than others. You know, one thing might be more suited to LinkedIn than Facebook. And it's, it just depends on the, the kind of products and where the, the audience is or the services and where the, the audience is really. So uh, predominantly, though, it is Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and uh, also some YouTube as well. Not so much, actually, but uh, that's that was another reason to get into the YouTube side of things was to understand more about how that works to, you know, add that to you know what we're doing but i'm definitely <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit like you i personally am the uh, systems and processes guy as opposed to the uh you know I've, I've i've studied aeronautical engineering at university so i'm i don't come from a marketing background but uh, my, my partners are more that side of things <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so cool man like how, how so how long have you been doing that part like how long you've been in that business uh so i've been doing that for about three uh three and a half four years something like that yep um, but they've, they, they've been in a, a lifetime, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really a, a sort of the design side of everything, you know, so, uh, aeronautical engineering, design and engineering, architectural design. So as I say, we ran the company over here for a decade building houses and I was kind of the architect and the, you know, project manager and all that sort of stuff. Um, also done coding, graphic design, all those sorts of things. So I, I do all of that side of stuff for my own things, you know, for all yeah. the businesses is, you know, all the graphic design. I, I, I just like the the design side and the engineering side of everything. And that's the same when it comes to a process, you know, how to, how to, how to break something down, something that's really quite complex into a series of simple steps. That's something that I really, I enjoy that process of, right, well, how am I going to, how am I going to do this? And that, that then translates over into the tutorials as well. It's just taking something that's seemingly complex and breaking it down into small steps, just like, uh, you know, a, an architectural marvel started with a single, you know, brick on the on the ground, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Mm. So that's cool, man. Spe so speaking of the process, right? Because in, in, look, I know I'm like jumping on, because you're like dropping so many things. I'm like, oh, uh, uh, I'm like squirrel. <laughs> Hold on, let's jump in there. <laughs> so on the process, how much easier do you feel like it makes your process doing your videos in, in the one take? Like, it, like what's, Walk me through what happens after you shoot the video. Um, well, I, I've got a, um, uh, I, I, I do a lot of automation stuff. That's some of the things that I cover on my channel as well. So okay. basically when I finish a recording in Ecamm Live, I press a button on my stream deck. If I'm happy with the recording and generally, you know, I, I don't get to the end of a recording thing. I wasn't happy with it. But I mean, <laughs> if, it, if it's ready to go up, basically, then I just press a button and it does a few things it opens up the youtube uh um interface it, it clicks on the button for me to upload a new video it then takes the um the ecamm live uh, recording renames it and puts it starts it uploading it also uploads it also opens the video though in a player um and then i've got a uh, a button on my stream deck to start and stop playing the the thing in the background but it's also opened up a text document for me to start writing out the uh, the timestamps so i do that in in there um i've got a button on my stream deck that as i'm going through i can press to actually create the timestamps as i'm going through if i'm honest i don't use that as much as i should <laughs> um, but then i'll go through and watch on double speed add in all the timestamps it also opens up my thumbnail uh, so I, all my thumbnails pretty much look the same they're all just from a template that I created in photoshop so it opens that up uh, and it's a I should i should really craft my thumbnails more but i spend about five minutes on them yeah. so it's just i've got a you know a, a batch of stupid you know youtube faces <laughs> <laughs> right 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 <laughs> um, so i just slap, slap one of those in it change the title and then export that as a pdf and then there's a thing that just actually then goes and adds that into the youtube as well so my, that, that took two hour window that i've got that, or that i used to use for my uh, youtube it was basically a case of i've got a running list of videos to make and it's over 200 at the moment um so i'll just literally pick one that i feel like making and then sit down and and do it uh, i have um I, I use moom which is a program for organizing applications on the screen uh, so late doing layouts of uh, you know where you want different applications on the screen so if i'm doing you know a, a a tutorial about a particular application it just puts everything in the right place on the screen to make that tutorial to have everything framed right in ecamm uh, then i'll just record the video end it and so kind of i suppose from finishing the recording to it being up on youtube is you know less than 15 minutes by the time i've you know, <laughs> written the description played it at double speed or whatever one thing that I haven't really got into my workflow yet that I'm, I'm looking to work more on though is is the the I, I don't do any repurposing. I don't go in and clip out you know mm. short clips things like that. Yeah. Um, I also don't do much uh, sort of cross posting to other platforms, not just 
duplicating it somewhere else, but doing meaningful cross posting. So that's something that with carving out more time for this, I'm getting more into actually batching the videos as opposed to just doing them one at a time, which is obviously not the most efficient way of doing it. Um, but then also focusing a bit more on doing those other kinds of things as well. Like, I just want you know, if, if I could push an emoji button right now, like it would just be my brain exploding because the <laughs> fact that the part that got me is that you said it's automated and like, because mm -hmm. everywhere else I go, we're like trying to hire people to do all that stuff. You just said that you're doing 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the the key to all of that, by the way, just in case anyone's interested, on the Mac, there's a program called Keyboard Maestro. Uh, and this allows you to do um, like anything, <laughs> anything on the Mac, because it uses things like, um, so the, the, the one button that triggers this macro, it basically opens up all of these different applications or web pages. So in the case of YouTube, it opens up YouTube Studio. Um, but then it will also, um, you can have it click on a found image on the page or on the, the, the screen. So the little button that you've got at the top of YouTube, which is, um, you know, upload a video, it clicks on that, it waits, it goes to where it says, uh, or what's, what's the button called? I forget what it says now. It says up, uh, create or up, upload or something like that. But then you can choose either live stream or video or whatever, or post. So it then clicks on the place where it says uh, video uh, and it goes through and it actually simulates all of the clicks that I would have made manually, basically. Um, and yeah, keyboard maestro is just, it's just the thing that I use. I, I don't know how many weeks of time it must have saved me in total <laughs> since I've been using it uh, for like 15 years or something. But it just, um, yeah, it's, it's just an amazingly powerful tool that allows you to set up all of that stuff. Man, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go get my Mac back now so I can uh, work as fast <laughs> as you, man. How, how long did it take you to actually set up? Like, because I'm imagining now, because you said the engineering background, right? So I'm imagining you sat down on like a whiteboard and like mapped it all out to what you wanted. Is that is that how that started? It's, the thing, the thing with Keyboard Maestro, there's uh, there's two things that people, two mistakes that people make when they first see Keyboard Maestro. Either they open it up and they think this is too overwhelming. There's too many things it can do. It's too complicated. I can't do this. Forget about it. Or the other thing they do, which is what I, the mistake I made in the beginning was my mind started worrying about all the different things I could do with it. I subsequently wrote like about 500 macros for all these different cool things it could do. And then I promptly forgot all of them. You know, I forgot the hotkeys for them. I mean, now we can trigger them all with stream deck, but it used to be that you would have like hotkeys. And so you're creating all these different hotkeys that you don't remember. The best way to work with it is to just build things up bit by bit. So if there's one thing and you think, you know what, I do this same thing every day. This is an ideal candidate for, you know, using keyboard maestro for. Uh, and so this was, the, this was what it was with that. It was a case of, right, well, this is what I do. And you literally just go through the process and say, okay, so what am I doing? I'm opening up YouTube studio. I'm clicking here and I'm clicking there. Well, let's get that part done. And you can, you don't have to program it all out in one go. You could literally just program a little macro to do this one particular thing, but then you start sort of chaining them all the different macros together to be, um, you know, it to, to be a whole process. Uh, and so it's, it's, it comes back to that same thing again. You look at the whole thing. If I press the button and you saw everything just popping and doing everything on the screen, you'd think that's crazy. What's going on. But if you break it down into small little manageable bite-sized chunks, then it's, it's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I like I'd be looking into all this because I was like, this is and did, you said you, you have some videos on your channel about this or Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got some uh, keyboard maestro uh, videos. I I still gotta make like a full guide to keyboard maestro. The problem I've had with it is because with Ecamm Live, it's got a particular set of uh you know things that you can do with it. And so I can make 130 videos out of that and it's it's done. The thing about Keyboard Maestro is I could make 10,000 videos and still not cover everything it could do. So it's always a balance with that of like, well, what, are, what is the path that I want to take people on with that? Whereas with Ecamm, there's a very clear arc of a journey that you're starting, you're opening up. Let's explain the scenes panel. Let's explain the overlays panel and stuff like that. Whereas with um, uh, Keyboard Maestro, it is a case of it can literally do anything. So what path do I want to take people down to explain you know, and, and open up as we go through the, the tutorials, open up more capabilities of it. And so it's, it's been a bit of a challenge to figure out like, well, what path should I take people on with it? But I've certainly got, you know, a few videos on the channel that explain the basics, understand how it works, understand uh, really giving people an, an idea of what it can do 
yeah. and the possibilities that they've got so that they can then sort of tailor it to what they're do, they, what they want to do. Oh man, that's, there's so much in that, man. One of the things I heard you say in that though, was the, uh, <laughs> cause you kind of explained it like almost even like a filmmaker or something. Cause you were like the story arc and like, Mm -hmm. how, what, like how, where'd that come from are you are you a movie guy a tv guy or or is that just something that just came to you <laughs> no it's 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 when you're trying to explain something that's complex to people i mean it's it's the same as um as, I, I suppose where it really comes from is my mathematical background the engineering background when you're deriving formulas so i've created lots of formulas for you know well for the, the trading algorithm for example right. you don't just show somebody like a complex formula and say here you go you've got to take them through and derive the formula. So you show, well, this is this because of that, that's that because of this. And then you put these two things together and it makes this other thing. Uh, and I suppose I've always had that kind of mindset. Um, and so, yeah, I've, to use this for the word story arc is kind of like a, a movie, I guess, but it is this same thing of taking people on logical steps to get from something that they know nothing about to actually becoming like an expert in it no expert was born an expert in anything. They've all just learned it by going through a series of logical steps to get from knowing nothing about it to expert level. <laughs> uh, and so that's what I kind of think with these courses. I, I call them masterclasses. A lot of people use masterclass and they'll throw up, you know, a few videos about something and it's not a masterclass because you don't, you don't come out of it a master. It's basically a beginner's guide or something like that. Right. So I do call, call the things that I've got on my YouTube. I call those beginner's guide. I've got a beginner's guide to stream deck, five videos, beginner's guide to keyboard maestro. That will be five videos, although I've only done a couple of them. Um, but all of the things I do on YouTube are more kind of beginner's guides. The masterclass, you've got to take people through from you go into it knowing nothing and you come out of it knowing everything about it. Uh, you know, whether you then have to take some time to hone the skill to uh, to apply it all is a, is a separate thing entirely. But <laughs> give them all the information in a masterclass. <laughs> That's so good, man. Um, let me ask you this. What, what piece of advice would you give to someone who's just getting into either the entrepreneur space or just starting on their creator journey? Like, what, what, what's the thing that you wish somebody would have told you when you jumped into this thing? <laughs> um. So there's, uh, there's one thing that people will say is just get going, just get on the camera, go live. I could never have done that. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend anyone do that. There, yeah. there is one thing about getting, getting live to sort of break the ice as it were, but I'm somebody who, uh, I did want a bit of structure. So actually the way my videos look now is pretty much the same as they looked when I started as well. I haven't changed much in terms of the design. I spent a month before I, I made the decision to start a YouTube channel. Uh, and then I took a month to actually get everything all lined up. I made the website. I made all my overlays for Ecamm Live. I, I practiced, <laughs> you know, practiced oh. the process of switching scenes and stuff like that. Uh, you know, well, how, how am I going to make these videos? How does this all work? You know, getting used to the technology, learning stuff uh, first, put all of the things in place. Like, you know, I had a buy me a coffee link, I had my, mm -hmm. you know, affiliate <laughs> links for different things. So I had that from, from the outset. So I think it's a case of though, um, setting a definite time when you're gonna gonna start so don't just say right let's just go live <laughs> but say okay i'm gonna go live in one month's time and yeah. then between now and then i'm gonna get everything sorted out i'm gonna practice whatever i need to practice you know if you need to you know if you are using something like ecamm for switching or something like that getting used to that uh practicing the flow of it um and then and and then at that date just going and doing it then whether you feel you're ready or not and one of the things about, you know, doing all the videos live and doing the live streams as well. My, my first video on YouTube was a live stream and I did that, you know, on purpose as well. Uh, but it was a live stream to nobody. So it was fine. I didn't have any subscribers. I didn't tell anyone about it. So it was just me, you know, and people still watch that video, which makes me laugh really. Uh, but it's, um, it, it was a case of, well, let me just, let me just get going and know that, um, uh, that it's not, not going to be perfect. The other thing is when you first start, you don't really know who your audience is and you might have an idea in your mind about who your audience is. Right. Um, but it's as, as time goes on, uh, you do find that there's, oh, there's these people who keep coming back to watch this stuff. And I'm <laughs> always amazed by, by that, you know, it's, and I'm always humbled by the fact that, you know, I do get people watching the videos and, you know, I love all of the, the, the positive feedback I get. I don't really get much negative. If I get one bit of negative feedback, uh, I think I've probably had about five negative comments in the, in the time. Uh, and they've all been, God, this guy waffles on and on. <laughs> because one of the thing about 
one take is you don't get to edit out, you know, all of the uh, <laughs> the bits where maybe you've talked too much. Maybe, maybe like now. <laughs> yeah, no, but see, that's what that's what I love about it, man, is because this, this is, I mean, in this conversation, right, how many times did I go, uh, oh, hold on, uh, and it's like, whatever, man, yeah. I, I, whatever. Uh-huh. It's, it's natural, man. That's so cool, man. So one of the things about that is that I've, I, <clears throat> when I was, um, when I've been learning from other people on YouTube, I know there's a, there's a, there's people who will talk about, you know, doing all these different kind of cuts and, you know, don't give people's time, time for people's attention to drop. You know, it's got to be just fast paced and keeping people, you know, so that they keep watching. And I do get that. I understand that that works. And if your primary, you know, motive is for those numbers and things like that, that's great. But personally, when I'm learning, I find that really tiring to watch. (laughs) So, that was another reason to not do that specifically on my channel is I want it to be more like I'm sitting down talking with somebody and uh, it isn't fast paced to the point where, you know, they can't almost keep up with it and they're trying to formulate ideas in their head, but you're just, you know, (laughs) jumping from one thing to another. So yeah, that was, uh, don't, don't be afraid if you're not, (laughs) not doing it like the, you know, the, the, uh, the fast paced (laughs) YouTuber style. Just develop your own style, I suppose, is the key. Yeah, I love I love that, man. That's all that's always that's the thing I loved about hearing what you said is because um it's 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 all steeped in self awareness. And it's the mm-hmm. fact that, like you said, you know that you needed the time and you needed to put the pieces together. And I ended up for me, it was like the opposite because I knew if I took too much time, I would never do it. And mm-hmm. so I was just like, well, we'll just hit this button and see what happens. And literally, you know, I yeah. just <laughs> I just stumbled my way through it, right? Like, so that's uh-huh. so good, man. I suppose the other the other really key one here as well is don't feel you need to have all of the gear. So when I mm-hmm. started, the, the the thing that I bought, or two things actually, I bought um, a microphone, the Shure yeah. MV7, uh, and I bought a, um, a Stream Deck. I bought the Stream Deck thinking that I was going to use it for just you know, making videos. I didn't realize what a powerful tool it was going to be, but that, that's another story. Yeah. But that's all I really had. The, the lights that I got were um, two generic soft boxes with, uh, you can change the temperature of the bulb. It changed the temperature of the light if you change the bulb, they're like that kind. You know, yeah. they just take regular bulbs. So I didn't spend a load on gear. It was just a case of getting going. The camera that I was using, I'm still using now, is a 10-year-old Canon EOS 60D. So, yeah. And it was a, a camera that I just wasn't, I hadn't been using because we just tend to use the cameras that we've got in our pockets these days. Um, and so I repurposed it for my, my Zoom calls, you know, so it's just plugged in over USB into the computer. Um, I have been planning to upgrade it. I've just never got around to it, to be honest. And it's been, you know, it, it doesn't look too bad. It's not the best uh, best camera in the world by any stretch these days. It doesn't do, you know, no 4K out of it. Um, but don't let that the gear be a limitation. I think there's too many people come into this and then they see all the, uh, you know, the latest gear and gadgets and things like that. And I would say, yeah, just get decent audio, (laughs) reasonably decent uh, uh, camera. I mean, these days you can use your iPhone as a camera in any case. And I've seen people where I've been watching their videos and then I've only found out later, oh, they're actually just using their iPhone with, you know, camo or an application like that. Yeah. So yeah, don't ever let the gear hold you back (laughs) is the, the key advice there, I think. Man, that's so good, man. Look. At that time flew, man. You, like, there was so much in there. Like, yeah, I, I appreciate that, man. Tell, tell everybody where they can find you. Tell them um, about the course. Um, if you guys are listening or watching, all of this information will also be in the uh, comments down or the comments, the description down below or in the show notes. But uh, just tell the people real quick where they can find you. Yep. So is basically search for Take One Tech on any platform. You'll probably find me, but uh, takeonetech.io is my website. There you'll find links to my courses. I also make icon packs and things like that for the uh, the Stream Deck. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll find everything there. Zoommasterclass.com and ecamlivemasterclass.com. Just nice. uh, direct links to the uh, the courses as well. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's where I am. Take one tech. <laughs> I love that domain. Look, I'm I'm a stickler for a straight up domain that just gets you there. No no extra stuff, yep. man. That's so cool. Yep. Well, guys, we appreciate you guys listening uh, to this episode of Mastermind Things Podcast. Alec, again, I appreciate you taking the time out to have this conversation with me and being so open, man. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Hey, absolutely. Catch you guys in the next episode.